When first introducing any subject of mathematics, the axioms or rules of the mathematical game are usually first introduced. After that, everything else requires a bit of logic. All the theorems, propositions, lemmas, and corollaries that arise are born out of two things, whether or not something is true or false. With this in mind, the algebra of true and false, or Boolean algebra, is one of, if not the most fundamental tool at one's disposal when approaching mathematical problems and conjectures. So how does Boolean algebra work? To start off, Boolean algebra is algebra where the values are always true, one, or false, zero. And instead of having addition and multiplication as the primary operations, we have what are called conjunctions, disjunctions, and negations. There are a few ways to think about these symbols. First, we could get a little bit wordy. So conjunctions are and statements, disjunctions are or statements, and negations are not statements. As we will see, depending on how you usually use or, disjunctions can be a little bit counterintuitive. Using truth tables, we can go ahead and give the definitions for these operators, given that we have a value for x and a value for y. These are the possible values of x and y, and x or y, and not x. When looking at the truth table for x or y, you might get tripped up by the true or true yields true, depending on your primary use of or in everyday speech. But this is how the disjunction operation is defined. It's an inclusive or. And that leads us to another way of thinking about these operations with sets. Instead of saying that true is one and false is zero, we can instead say that true is the set containing one and false is just the empty set. From this framework, disjunctions become unions and conjunctions become intersections. And negations become complements, where the universal set for the complement operation is the set containing one. We can recreate the truth tables using set notation instead, and I'll do that here. Arguably, the most important piece of Boolean algebra for our mathematicians is the content of a secondary operator called material implication, aka implication. Translating the symbols into language, we get the basis for many mathematical statements. If x, then y, or x implies y. Implication is defined by the following truth table. And these rows usually trip people up, the ones where x is false. In this situation, we have something that is deemed vacuously true. One of the easier ways to think about this is with inequalities. Let a be some integer and let x be the inequality, a is less than seven. And let y be the inequality, a is less than 10. Then the implication x implies y is something we should agree on being true. Because if a is less than seven, seven is less than 10, then a is less than 10. However, when we go ahead and choose a value for a like eight, we get something that's a little bit off. Eight is less than seven is a false statement. But when working with implications, especially in the proof setting, the goal is to use whatever is given in X to show or infer something about Y to determine if it is true or not. Given some reality where eight is less than seven under the usual notion of less than doesn't make any sense. So you're in a situation where there is nothing to determine if eight less than 10 is true based on the information from eight being less than seven. Another more formal way of looking at how implications are defined is with their equivalent expression, not x or y. If you're skeptical if the two are actually equivalent, it's a good and quite honestly short exercise to prove that this is in fact the case. And when I say equivalent here, I'm talking about logical equivalence. So the two expressions should generate the same column of truth values in a truth table. Anyhow, that's all I wanted to get through today. Uh, I know it's been a while since I made one of these videos. I have started a new job, I moved into a new apartment, and it has been quite hectic finding the time to sit down and film and record and make sure that everything looks nice, but I was able to film two or three videos in the past week-ish, so those will be coming out soon, which I'm super excited about. But Anyhow, aside from that, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics videos. We're almost at 500, which is crazy, but 
Anyway, um, as always, I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time. Thank you.